Hi everybody, welcome to the Santa Fe Independent Film Festival Master's Discussion with Julia Cameron. She's helped people all over the world unlock their creativity. She's a New York Times best-selling author and her latest book, The Listening Path, is on shelves now. I got my copy at Collected Works. The book I'm holding is The Artist's Way and uh, it includes many of her teachings but today uh, is a special treat for all of us because we get to be students and uh, Julia is going to talk about the bedrock of her teachings basic creativity tools hi Julia hi I'm delighted to be here I'm delighted to have anything to do with the world of film uh, which is a world I inhabited for many years uh, and I myself uh, wrote, produced, and directed a feature film. Uh, and it's available for viewing uh, on my website, juliacameronlive.com. So if you're curious, uh, it's a romantic comedy called God's Will. And God is an attractive red-haired lady golfer. So would you like me to begin? Please. Okay. I want to talk to you today about three basic tools uh, that have come f forward over the years uh, from people working with the artist's way. Uh, and the basic tools are morning pages uh, and artist dates and walks. So I'd like to take a little bit of time on each one of these tools uh, and explain to you uh, that if you use these tools, you'll have a creative breakthrough. So um, I can pretty much guarantee that the tools do work. Uh, and at, at this point, 5 million copies of the book have been sold. Uh, and that's an awful lot of people uh, who are working with these basic tools. So the first basic tool is something I call morning pages. Uh, and uh, that's M-O-R-N-I-N-G, not M-O-U-R-N-I-G, uh, morning pages. Uh, and what are they? So uh, they are three pages of longhand morning writing that you do first thing on waking up. Uh, and they are uh, strictly stream of consciousness. Uh, I, I don't want anybody thinking that they have to do, quote, real writing. Uh, these are, pages are for your eyes only. Uh, and you don't show them to anyone, no matter how significant your significant other is. Uh, you keep the pages private, uh, and they are a place where you dream, vent, uh, where you cajole yourself into action. Uh, they are pages about almost anything. Uh, and I think the way to think of them uh, is that they are like a little whisk broom that you poke into all the corners of your consciousness uh, and you bring the rubble and debris uh, into the center of the room where you can deal with it. So what they are uh, is, I think, a very effective form of meditation. Uh, and I should explain uh, that they are not like conventional meditation. With conventional meditation, you take an issue into meditation for, say, 20 minutes, uh, and at the end of 20 minutes, uh, you realize that you have meditated away any need for action, uh, that you have meditated yourself into a state of calm. Now, what happens with morning pages is that after 20 minutes of writing, you find yourself saying, I goddamn well better do something about this. 
and you are moved into action. So morning pages are a tool that provokes you to take risks. Uh, and I think it's important to say that at first, when the pages will suggest a risk, you'll say to yourself, oh, that's too big a risk. I can't do that. Uh, and then the pages will suggest the same risk over again. And you'll think, oh, maybe I could do that. And then the third time they come around and they say, hey, really, you should try this. You find yourself saying, oh, all right, I'll try it. Uh, and that phrase, oh, all right, I'll try it, becomes a sort of mantra uh, for you as you begin to take risks. So with morning pages, uh, you are sending a telegram to the universe where you are saying to it, okay, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. <laughs> This is what I want more of. This is what I want less of. Uh, and it's as if you're sending a telegram uh, and it goes to the universe, or if you uh, want to say it goes to a higher power or a muse, uh, you can call it whatever you like, uh, just so long as you start to believe in a benevolent something. Uh, and that's something that happens automatically with morning pages. You may start out uh, with a, a, what I would call a negative God concept. Uh, and a, a lot of us grew up with this. We grew up with uh, a, a story of creation where it's a um, lovely day in paradise uh, and then Eve plucks an apple from a forbidden tree. And all of a sudden, you hear this booming voice say, what are you doing? I told you not to pluck that apple. From now on, you're going to bear your children with pain and suffering. And in fact, the two of you are not even going to get along. Uh, and so from this story, we learn that we have a sort of jealous, competitive God uh, that doesn't want us to become too big for our britches. So I want you to picture now what it would have been like if we grew up with a God that uh, was more benevolent. So it's a beautiful, sunny day in paradise. And Eve reaches uh, for the apple from the forbidden tree. Uh, and she says to Adam, sweetheart, take a bite. It's delicious. And Adam is a hopeless codependent. Uh, so he does exactly as he is told. And he takes a bite of the apple. And then we hear a booming voice come from out of the heavens. Uh, and it's the voice of the higher power speaking. Uh, and it says, far out. It took you long enough. I made that apple red for a reason. From now on, you're going to have multiple children that you love and adore and who love and adore you. And the two of you are going to be blissfully happy. So what we learn from this creation myth is that we have a God who thinks it's tremendous if we reach higher, reach for that apple, uh, if we expand ourselves. So when you start morning pages, you sort of have a shrunken idea of yourself. Uh, you, you are full of trepidation uh, and you feel like, well, the world is probably a pretty hostile place. But then you do morning pages uh, and you, you write every day, uh, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. And you begin to notice an upswing 
in synchronicity. Your luck improves. You begin to be in the right place at the right time. You begin to realize, well, maybe the world is not so hostile. Maybe it's a little bit benevolent. So you begin to believe in a benevolent, kindly something that has uh, your interests at heart. So people will say to me, well, Julia, do they have to be done in the morning? I'm terrible in the morning. And I say, well, that's why they're called morning pages. They have to be done in the morning. And I tell them that uh, Dr. Carl Jung uh, believed that we had a 45 minute window upon awakening before our defenses were in place. So during that 45 minute window, you write your morning pages. Uh, and what you find is that you become more authentic, um, a, a little bit more honest. Uh, and it, you find yourself being specific. So when you say to yourself, uh, how do I feel about this? Uh, and in the olden days, you might just say, I feel okay. But with morning pages, you say, oh, I feel precisely this way. I feel precisely and exactly this way. Uh, and you become much more articulate in your own behalf. So I think uh, morning pages are done first thing on awakening. And people will say to me, Julia, what about my coffee? <laughs> and I would say, I wouldn't dream of standing between you and a cup of coffee. So just don't take 45 minutes trying to brew the perfect cup. And I sometimes tell them what I do, uh, which is that I brew a pot of coffee the night before and stick it in the refrigerator. So then when I get up in the morning, I pad to the kitchen, I pad to the refrigerator, I open it up, and I take out icy brewed coffee. Uh, and uh, my first coffee of the day is an iced coffee. Uh, and that allows me to get quickly to the page. So I think it's important. Uh, I want to say... Uh, it's important to do the pages regularly, uh, to do them every day. Uh, and what happens is that people start out by saying, oh, Julia, my life is so boring. And I say, I don't think your life is boring. We'll just see. And within two or three weeks, people are saying, oh, Julia, my life is so interesting. I had no idea. Uh, and they are realizing uh, that they are starting to happen to their life instead of having their life happen to them. So they are becoming more, more authentic, uh, more vulnerable, more daring. Uh, and more articulate. Uh, and these things all happen sort of automatically. And sometimes people will say, Julia, I can't read my writing. <laughs> and I will say, well, then slow down a little bit uh, and try to not scribble. Uh, and then you should be able to read your own writing. So uh, I think uh, it's important to say that our writing makes our lives legible to us. Uh, and I'm trying to think of what things I'd like to teach you uh, about morning pages. Uh, I, I don't know if I have been persuasive enough in telling you how much risk they 
entail uh, and how much expansion they entail uh, and how much courage they bring to the fore. Uh, as, as we write, this is how I really feel, uh, we become more courageous, uh, we become more honest, uh, we become, well, I, I want to promise you that you become happy. Uh, and that morning pages are sort of a greased slide to self-satisfaction. Uh, and they are a um, they are a, a very potent tool. I will have people say things to me like, Julia, I was perfectly happy drunk in the outback. <laughs> then I started doing morning pages. Now I'm sober and a Hollywood screenwriter. <laughs> and or, or I'll have people say, Julia, I did morning pages. I'm 60 years old, and I have just completed my first children's book. Or I'll have somebody say to me, Julia, I did morning pages, and I got an idea for a book. And then instead of just having the idea and letting it go, I actually wrote the book. Uh, and this afternoon I did a photo shoot for the cover. Uh, and I, it, I published it myself. Uh, and then it was picked up by another press. And now they're interested in my second book. Uh, and I find myself stalling do you think it would help if I did morning pages? <laughs> and I say, well, yes, morning pages always help. Uh, and um, I think it's important, you know, I've talked about uh, having a God concept uh, or a universal energy concept. Uh, and uh, I think it's important to say that you don't have to uh, believe in in a God uh, to do morning pages. I have somebody say to me, Julia, I'm a Jew and an atheist, hardly your target audience. Uh, and I found myself using morning pages and they worked for me. And then I had someone else say, I, people always seem to love to come up to me and say, I'm an atheist as if I'm going to go, oh my God, an atheist. Uh, and so I had another man come up to me and say, Julia, I'm an atheist. <laughs> and I said, yes, and? Uh, and he said, uh, I've been doing morning pages for 22 years and I've written 13 feature films. And so I he said, I don't believe in God. And I said, well, you may not believe in God, but clearly God believes in you. <laughs> so um, I just want to assure you that you don't have to have uh, a sp spiritual belief to do pages, but that what they will do is create a spiritual awakening for you. Uh, and uh, people tell me, Julia, I did morning pages and I lost a hundred pounds. <laughs> and I'll say, well, you don't look like you need to lose any more. <laughs> you look perfect. Uh, and, um, so the pages will take up an issue. Uh, and sometimes people want to know, uh, Julia, should I be rereading my morning pages? Uh, and I think this question comes about 
because people are afraid they'll miss something. That the pages will say something important and they won't notice it. Uh, but what I have found is that the pages are a nag. Uh, they're sort of a tough love friend. So if an issue is on your plate and you're not dealing with it, the pages will bring it up again and again and again. Like the story about the woman who's drunk in the outback. She did morning pages uh, and they, they said, you were drunk last night. <laughs> And she said, thank you for sharing. Uh, and she did morning pages the next day and they said, drunk again last night. And then she did another day of morning pages and she said, maybe I better do something about this little drinking problem. <laughs> so the pages nagged her uh, until she was willing to take affirmative action. So... I've said that they're a form of meditation. They're also a form of prayer uh, because when you put something on the page, what you are implicitly saying is, can you help me with this? So it's a prayer of petition. Can you help me with this? Uh, and the answer is, well, yes, I can help you with this. So... I think I have done an okay job of explaining morning pages to you. I'm wondering if you have any questions uh, that you'd like answered. You know, Julia, I often find myself resisting my morning pages. What does that mean? Or what could that mean? Resistance is just human nature. Uh, and uh, it, it isn't anything too sinister. Uh, we resist morning pages uh, despite the fact that we know that they're good for us. Uh, and uh, I think that we resist morning pages uh, because we're on the brink of a breakthrough. Uh, and we have the most resistance uh, when we're about to write something that is going to be challenging or earth shattering. Uh, and we say, oh, I'm too tired to write pages today. I'm too busy to write pages today. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I, I, I think it's encouraging that it could mean I'm on the verge of a breakthrough, but I think uh, I think somewhere in uh, your book it says that if you're resisting the pages, that means you need them the most, or uh, something's going on that you're hiding from yourself. Is that am I on the right track there? You're definitely on the right track. Uh, if you're resisting pages, you're resisting self knowledge, uh, and what we realize as we work with pages is that the more self-knowledge we get, the more power we get. So uh, I think when we, we start morning pages, we often feel like a victim. We feel like there are things going on in our life that we don't like and we feel powerless to change. And then we do morning pages uh, and they suggest slight changes but the slight changes add up over time into a big change. I have, uh, I used to teach with a man named Mark Bryan, uh, and Mark said to me, it's as if you make an adjustment at the beginning of the trajectory of a space launch. Uh, and with morning pages, you adjust the trajectory slightly. Uh, but by the time you've been doing them for a while, it's the difference between landing on Mars or Venus. So um, 
Any other questions? Oh, I love that. Um, and no, I, I think uh, that's it's such a wonderful uh, insight into the pages. And uh, we learned so much uh, even beyond what we've read in the books. Maybe it's uh, time to move to the next um, the next uh, important part of the formula. Okay, thank you for giving me a little nudge uh, because we're moving into a tool which is called an artist's date. Uh, and uh, here's how it goes. Like if I'm teaching you uh, and I say to you, I have a tool for you to use. It's a nightmare. It's called morning pages. Uh, you're going to be working on your creativity. And people will say, work? I understand work. I have a strong work ethic. Uh, and so they will readily undertake morning pages and the work it entails. But then if I say, now I have a second tool, uh, and this one involves play, and I want you to go out once a week and do something festive, something fun, something you enjoy, something that enchants you, just, just for the sheer glee of doing it. Uh, and what happens is people cross their arms and they frown and they, they say to me, play. I don't see what play has to do with working on my creativity. And I say, well, we have an expression, the play of ideas, but we don't realize that it's a prescription. Uh, and the prescription is play and you will get ideas. So if you do morning pages, that's wonderful. And then once a week, for an hour or two hours, not long, you go do something that's interesting to you. And it should be something um, non-intellectual. <laughs> I, I don't want you taking a hard computer class that you've been putting off. Uh, instead, I'd like you to go to a children's bookstore. Or I have a, a favorite artist date which is I go to a pet store where they have George the bunny. Uh, and George is an enormous bunny. Uh, and I have permission to pet George. So I go to the pet store. I say, where's George? And they go, oh, George is over there by the reptiles. <laughs> And I go, oh, George, can't you please come stand somewhere else besides by the snakes? Uh, but um, I get to pet George, uh, and it gives me a sense of benevolence and glee. So I would say, go to a pet store. Maybe go to a plant store. Uh, and... Uh, don't just say, oh, I saw a flower. <laughs> Actually stay there for a while and notice. Uh, I, I particularly like bromeliads, which are um, pink with little purple buds. Uh, and uh, they're very gorgeous. Uh, and I may find myself at the end of my artist state saying, how much does a bromeliad cost? Uh, and finding out it costs $11, I think, oh, well, I think I can afford one. Uh, and I'll get a bromeliad. So artist dates are playful. Uh, you should do something that would appeal to your inner eight-year-old. Uh, and uh, they, sh they shouldn't be work. Uh, and they, they shouldn't be solemn. Uh, the object is to do something truly festive. Uh, and sometimes it takes a little bit of doing 
uh, to list, it would be fun to visit a pet store. It would be fun to visit a plant store. It would be fun to go to a concert. It would be fun to, and you fill in the blank. So um, I'd like to suggest that everybody take out a, a piece of paper uh, and list five things it would be fun to, and that's your initial list of, of artist states. So if you do artist states in conjunction with morning pages, uh, you find yourself having a, um, an, ex an experience of heightened synchronicity. Uh, and uh, if you just, people are willing to just do morning pages, but I want them to have the experience of a breakthrough. So I say, now please, please do an artist day. Uh, and um, when they when they do, they experience a breakthrough. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the third basic tool uh, and to, to say, when I wrote The Artist's Way, I thought there were only two basic tools, morning pages and artist dates. Uh, and then it's a 12 week course. And in week 12, I said, P.S. exercise. Uh, and uh, so now it's 30 years later. Uh, and I have realized that P.S. exercise is not good enough, that the third tool uh, is a very simple tool, and it's called take a walk uh, and uh, go by yourself. Don't... Uh, don't take a radio, don't take your phone, don't take your dog. I, I want you to walk with your own consciousness in mind. And what happens is that you may walk out with a question on your mind. Uh, and after you've walked for say 20 minutes and you walk back in, you realize now you have an answer in mind. So what happens with walking is that it puts us into the now. Uh, and spiritual teachers will tell us that the now is always a safe place. We're always all right right now. So when we walk, we have an experience of feeling all right right now. So that's the third tool. Uh, and I, I like to say, do morning pages, do artist dates, lace up your shoes and take a walk. Uh, and if you do these three things, I promise you a breakthrough. So I hope God. You Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, and thanks so much for really diving into so many of your teachings and letting uh, the people uh, listening kind of get a taste or if they're already familiar with your books, even uh, go deeper. Now, I, I know friends of yours uh, on occasion have charged you with being woo woo. What is it to be woo woo and why is that not necessarily a disadvantage? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I had a fear uh, that I would be considered too woo-woo, uh, by which I meant sort of airy-fairy and otherworldly. Uh, and then I had a girlfriend who's a Jungian analyst. Uh, and I told her, Bernice, I'm worried I'm too woo-woo. And Bernice said, Julia, woo-woo is where it's at. <laughs> so that's sort of what I would say to people now, woo-woo is where it's at. And I'm out of the closet about 
being woo woo. Oh, that's that's nice to hear. Now, for the artist dates, uh, that's something that you do alone. Is there a, a reason that you do an artist date alone and not with a, a friend or a, a loved one? Oh, absolutely. It's called an artist date, which is sort of a romantic term uh, that what you are doing is wooing yourself. So uh, you plan the date ahead of time, you look forward to it, and you, you do it alone. Uh, and you do it alone because you're trying to fall in love with yourself. Uh, and what I find is that if people share their artist dates, they dilute their artist dates. Uh, it's a, a little bit like if you go to the movie with a friend, half of you is watching the movie and half of you is watching the friend watch the movie. So um, what you want to do uh, is do it by yourself. Now, is there anything else uh, that you want to tell the people out there before we wrap it all up? Um, maybe something specific to uh, filmmaking that uh, your teachings have helped you with in your film work or uh, another friend who's a uh, writer or filmmaker, or maybe just something that uh, we didn't get to along the way. Well, I think I'd like to talk to people about trusting their first thought. I, I think uh, when you're writing a screenplay, uh, you can waste a lot of time trying to think of your second, third, and fourth thoughts. Uh, and what I find is very often our first thought uh, is our right thought. So I say, don't second guess yourself. Just do what seems to come next. Write the next right thing. Uh, and I think it's important to say uh, that screenplays are written a page at a time. Uh, and we sometimes think, oh, I'd love to write a screenplay, but it's so much work. Uh, but what we find is if we do it a page at a time, a day at a time, uh, you know, when I write screenplays, I usually say I do three pages of morning writing, morning pages, and then I do three pages of script. Uh, and uh, that builds up uh, over a month. You have 90 days of 90 pages of script. So it's actually very fast, even though it seems like you're being asked to go very slow. Wow. Well, I think we're uh, just getting to the end of our time. And I, I'm just so uh, moved by uh, your lecture. It really kind of confirmed a lot of the things that I was wondering from reading your books and then uh, reaffirmed some of the other things I was already uh, using as tools to unlock my own creativity. Is there uh, anything else you want to add before we sign off? I want to say, trust yourself. Uh, and that what happens with morning pages is that there's no wrong way to do them. So you write down the first thing that occurs to you and then the next thing that occurs to you. Uh, and what that does is it miniaturizes your sensor. Uh, because when you write, your, your critic will pick up and say, oh, this is boring, but you've learned there's no wrong way to do pages. So instead of stopping, you say, thank you for sharing. <laughs> and you keep right on going. Uh, and that becomes a portable skill. Uh, and then when you're working on your screenplay uh, and your critic says, this scene is dumb, you say to your critic, thank you for sharing. <laughs> and you keep right on writing. Uh, and I think uh, if I would like to say anything to people, it's 
Please try writing. God, that is just lovely. Um, what a treat for all of us out here at the Santa Fe Independent Film Festival to be able to hear from someone who's so tried and true in her methods of unlocking the creativity of creative people all over the world. This was best-selling author and filmmaker, Julia Cameron. Thanks so much for joining us, Julia. Thank you.